Hello, this is Ruth Guthrie, and we'll be talking about organizational decision making. This is a photograph of Robert Anthony, another one of those really smart guys from Harvard. And he was credited during his career with making accounting easier. And for those of you who took ACC 207 here, you may think that that's crazy. How did he, how did he manage to do that? But they said his focus was on decision making and how accounting supports that, not necessarily on balance sheets. And so it made it more applied for students. And since you go to the University of LBD, Learn by Doing, I think that his ideas would fit in well with us. But we're only borrowing a little bit from him. In 1965, Robert McNamara, Secretary of Defense at the time, asked him to become the comptroller for the Defense Department. This was a time when defense companies had projects and budgets that were out of control, and Anthony's leadership and innovation helped with this problem and gave us a view of accounting that was more as a control system than simply balance sheets and uh, things like that. So in this lecture, we're going to use a simple organizational control model that he used to describe companies, and we're going to use it to define information systems and how they are classified at different organizational levels. This is it. It's really simple and it makes a lot of intuitive sense. At the bottom of the company, there are lots of people and transactions that take place. As you move to the middle level of the firm, fewer people have tactical jobs as managers, making decisions that determine how things will run. Then at the very highest level, the strategic level or the C level, CEO, CFO, CIO level individuals will determine the strategic initiatives that make the company successful. Regarding information systems that support decision making, at the top level, we've got EIS or SIS, Executive Information Systems or Strategic Information Systems. Let's use Walmart's redeploying products to areas hit by Hurricane Katrina as an example. The executives might ask, should we deploy products to areas hit by Hurricane Katrina interrupting our supply chain? And that's a decision that they'll make at the very top level. At the middle level, the MIS level, Mid-level managers are making the decisions that tactically run the organization. So they might have staffing decisions to make regarding the Hurricane Katrina redeployment of products. So they might ask how many people need overtime to support the hurricane relief effort or what is the projected cost of, of supporting the hurricane victims. Lastly, at the operational level, transaction processing systems, the questions will be related to daily transactions Inventory is a good example of this. What do we need to tell our suppliers in order to stay stocked in flashlights, first aid kits, and beer? This model is easy to understand and it gives us a simple way to categorize and understand the purpose of different information systems at different organizational levels. So you might have already gleaned from this model that different or levels of organizational decision making have different decision making characteristics. The purpose of information systems is to support organizational decision making. That is, they support people who are trying to make decisions that make the company run better, run more efficiently, or run more effectively. At the top level, decisions are strategic, unique, and complex. We might not even know where exactly the data to support those decisions will come from. At the middle level, the decisions are semi-structured, more repetitive, and oriented towards mid-level decision-making. The data for these decisions comes from aggregated data from lower levels of the organization or even from outside sources. Usually, the data is summarized to an appropriate managerial level. At the bottom level of the pyramid, the decision-making is focused on filling operational objectives. The decisions are highly structured, not complex, and generally have massive amounts of transactional data associated with them. So a TPS example, transaction processing system example, might be a point of sale system. The sales receipts represent the transactional data. It can be used to determine if some items are out of stock. At a help desk, the transactional data might be informational about each call. This can give information about how many calls came in each day, how long each call took, and whether the problem was solved or not. At the Cal Poly Library, the transactions recorded for checking out books would reveal the volume of checkouts for each day. MIS. Again, MIS typically supports semi-structured decisions. At the help desk, we could ask, what is the most frequent problem that callers have and how can we support them? 
At the library, we could ask, what is the most busy day? Is there a way to have self-serve checkout so that we do not need to increase our labor costs? They're mid-level decisions that aren't necessarily based on transactions alone. The decisions made help the company run better. Finally, at the strategic level, the decisions are unstructured. Management might want to know if we should outsource the help desk. Librarians might ask, why do people still need libraries? Or, how can the library change to fit with the digital world? Now let's shift gears a little and talk about the decision process. You probably have gone through some kind of decision process, buying a car, deciding what your topic is for a term paper, though you may not have thought of it in these specific steps. The steps of the rational decision process are problem, identifying what you're trying to solve, two, investigation, data collection, find sources of data or experience that help investigate the problem thoroughly, Three, solution generation. Determine what solutions are possible based upon your knowledge gained from the data. Four, test and evaluation. Maybe do a pilot study to see if the solution will actually work. If not, keep looking for a viable solution. Five, selection. Select the best option given your constraints. Six, implementation. Implement the solution. Seven, assessment. See if the solution solved the problem. An example of this might be, should Cal Poly have an online MBA program? To investigate, I could look at other MBA programs and find out who the competition is. Is this program consistent with our mission, vision, and values? Or is it good for students? Is there demand for it? I might also look at costs associated with development and deployment of the program. Then I could come up with several plausible solutions, offer a hybrid program, do it exclusively online, market to people in other countries, and then weigh the pros and cons of each different solution. After careful analysis, I can pick one type of solution and maybe do a pilot to see if we're any good at online delivery. That might perhaps give me some insight into what other support items I might need. Then hopefully I'm ready to implement. Everyone hates assessment. However, it really would be in my interest to measure the success of my program, either to end it, promote it, or improve it. I need to know how well our plan worked out. A little bit more on assessment. Assessment uses benchmarking and metrics to determine the success or state of health of the system. Longitudinally measuring something will let you know if you're better or worse off than you were before. Measuring may also prove predictive in that you know when to expect cyclic changes in your industry. Plan ahead so you know that your measures will give you the information that helps you make decisions. There are many terms in business and other disciplines that indicate measurement. You've probably heard people talk about metrics. Metrics means measures, no mystery. A benchmark is also a measure. It's a comparison. For example, the time it takes your car to go from 0 to 60 is a comparison you can make across cars. 0 to 60 is the standard that we set to measure by. A benchmark is a system of measurement so that you can make a comparison. In business, Two measures we often talk about are KPIs, Key Performance Indicators, and CSFs, Critical Success Factors. Try to remember KPI is the more concrete form of measurement. It is a defined set of values to measure something, like the number of new customers or the average shipping time. A CSF, Critical Success Factor, is something your company needs to do to achieve its strategic goals such as attracting new customers or clients, retaining existing customers and clients, or producing quality products and services. It is more abstract than a KPI. It's a factor, not an indicator. These are examples of KPIs that could be used in a human resources department. I got them from rapidbi.com. BI stands for business intelligence. Some KPIs for HR are new employee satisfaction rate with the recruiting process, or percentage of new employee retention after six months. These are measures of success for the HR function. Here are some more examples of KPIs for finance. Accounts payable turnover, cycle time for expense reimbursements. These are all quantifiable things you can measure. We're at the end of the lecture again, and I've got another set of questions for you to test your knowledge and how well you understood what we talked about. 
So I'd like you to think about the information systems at different organizational levels, right? At the bottom, we've got transaction processing systems. In the middle, management information systems. And at the top, strategic or executive information systems. So the first example is remote checking deposit, you know, where you take your cell phone and you can take a picture of a check and then deposit it directly to your bank without having to go to the bank. So what type of information system is this? Give you a little time to think about it. That's right, transaction processing system. Lots of transactions, lots of people making deposits. It's at the lower level of the firm. All right, let's try another one. What type of information system is one that tells a political candidate how to allocate television advertising? So think about it. We have demographics from all the different regions. We know where the swing vote is and what issues resonate with those people. What type of information system is going to help someone decide how to allocate the advertising dollars? That's right, executive information system. This is a strategic decision, and we're not exactly sure. We might pull that information from several different sources and then make our best decision that we know how. All right, well, there's only one left, right? MIS, mid-level. So the last one, what type of information system is used to handle employee payroll? Ah, trick question. It's actually transaction processing system. Employee payroll is well understood. It's done again and again. There's no complexity to it and there's no surprises. Payroll is a transaction processing system, not at the mid-level of the organization. So I hope you got that right. Here are a few more quiz questions for you. Which of the following are KPIs versus CSFs? Remember, a KPI is key performance indicator. It's a more concrete measure of what you're actually doing. A CSF are things that you need to do to achieve your strategic goals. A, average time to find a parking place. So if you think about that, that's a very great Cal Poly example. All of these examples are Cal Poly. Average time to find a parking space. Is it a CSF or a KPI? You're right, it's a KPI. That's a three minutes or 30 minutes, it's a concrete, definable thing that you can trend over time and you'll realize in the afternoon that it's harder to find a parking space than in the morning or evening. Probably something you don't need to measure to figure that out. B, maintaining a diverse student body. That's a critical success factor. That is actually one of Cal Poly's strategic goals in the mission of the university. And you'll, you'd have measures to see whether you do that or not, but diversity is a big core value of the university. C, average class size. Yeah, KPI, that one's obvious, right? And you can tell over time, or is your average class size going up or down? D, professor evaluations. Yes, another KPI. And you can, again, these are things you measure every single class and you can see on 16 fields how the professor is doing. E, use of technology in the classroom. CSF, that is, again, this is a polytechnic university and we really pride ourselves with doing technological things and classroom innovation. And there are several different measures that might indicate how we're doing uh, in achieving that strategic initiative. F, reducing the university's carbon footprint. That's another CSF, becoming more green and uh, sustainable is a core university value. All right, thanks, this is it.